So hey guys. This is your favorite fiction domain. So in this video, we will see what if Naruto was descendant Satan and king of Mammon clan. But before we start, remember to subscribe and like this video. Now let's start. My son, approach. Within a castle tower, the cobblestone interior bathed in crimson light, a young man stood inhabiting a throne room of sorts. Of average build and height, what stood out most about him was the stark contrast his golden blonde head of hair had offered comparison to the dwelling's decor, made mostly of sharp and vile things twisted in unnatural directions and covered in what could easily pass as blood. He acknowledged the order with a curt nod, his body bending forward. Blue eyes flickered toward the throne, tinged with the shade of a robin's egg. Before him, a throne of blackened claws dominated the middle of the room with its presence. One other person was present and her soft behind sat naked upon the seat with no complaint. Tomato red hair cascaded down her back and fell upon the black spikes, offering her lithe body a soft cushion. Mother. In his mind, he imagined she teased him like that on purpose. Kashina, ignorant to her son's vivid imagination, shifted comfortably in her seat. Today was a joyous day, and she had no intention of squandering it. For it was finally time for her son to make his first trip to the human realm and how anxious she was for him to start. Too long had they been forced to hide themselves away from the other devils, in the corner of the world where no one would pay attention to. It was time for their clan to return to greatness, and her son would be the one to bring them back on that path. She had waited so long for this moment, that she had to bite her tongue to cull her excitement. Naruto, you know what you must do, don't you? It was more of a rhetorical question than anything. She had been preparing them for the past few years. Her son knew what was at risk, more than anyone. Yes, mother. Naruto shifted uncomfortably. I take it the preparations for living have been made? Of course. She waved his concerns. Your things have been packed? A simple nod was her reply. There really was little else to say. Pleasantries aside, she knew her son was stalling for time. He had never left her sight since he was born, and no doubt he had secretly detested the contents of the day's itinerary. But, just as he was weaned from her milk, he would learn to live without her in the same home. Very well then. She waved her hand and a magic circle appeared beneath his feet, are you ready? Naruto took another look around what had become a very common, boring sight for his relatively young life. As much as it would pain him to leave, the excitement of traveling to a new realm was not something lost on him. If his mission would bring happiness to his mother, then he would complete it without fail. When his father died, it fell to him to protect the family and see his mother's desire come to fruition. No one would stop the rise of the mammon, as long as he was still alive. Mother, before I go, he struggled to express his desires. As a devil and a noble, he was raised to make clear his wants and needs and even take whatever he pleased. The only one he could not express his will to was his mother, who ironically taught him everything he would need to make his wishes come true. Somehow, she had never once acknowledged him past that of an heir, and perhaps a tool to be used. M. Kashina shifted on the throne, pondering her son's hidden request. This just won't do, will it? Then, she rose from the throne and began to make her approach. Each step was even with the other as his mother showed off the royal etiquette she was raised with. More noticeable was each step she took caused her sizable bust to sway and slap the skin beneath. Her arms wrapped around his neck, cradling his body in her grasp. With just a touch, the resistance in his body gave way and he fell into the hold. As if she were a fragile piece of art, his arms were slow to wrap about her waist. There, my child. One of her hands forcefully grasped his hand and placed it on her waist. One last embrace before I let you go. Naruto was muffled as he was buried into the crook of her neck, inhaling the sweet scent of her perfume. He felt something wet pressed gently against his cheek. Mother is kissing me. It was too much to bear. He was so close, yet so far. The stimulation stunned him into inaction, and he was slowly wrapped around his mother's finger. I have one last gift for you, before you leave me, she pushed away, allowing them to have some breathing space. Kashina held up the palm of her hand, as if to offer something to him. A small blast of energy erupted, and two chess pieces came into being. One was a blood red king piece, and the other a pearlescent white pawn. After only a moment of existence, the pawn transformed into the shape of a bishop, then a knight, a rook, and then a queen. It continued to switch between shapes at random, 
and Naruto had difficulty identifying just what it was he was looking at. For you, my son. She thrust her palm out toward him, and the pieces gravitated toward his chest. Two evil pieces. A king for yourself, and a mutation piece I obtained some time ago. Kashina narrowed her eyes and for the first time since the beginning of their talk appeared to be genuinely concerned. Do not waste their power on weaklings. You will only have one chance to use it. He could do nothing but hold his chest and feel the power emanating from the artifacts. The trust his mother gave him to hold onto such things meant she was no longer willing to hold back on him. There was no turning back, for either of them. My dear Naruto, please come back soon. A magic circle appeared beneath him again as crimson light covered his vision. In the middle of the embrace, his mother had summoned another circle and sent him through. Now, he found himself hurtling through space and time with the portal to his home growing more and more distant. His mother had given him the tools. Now it was his turn to show he knew how to use them. The damn sun is going to make living here a lot more annoying. Atop a building's roof, Naruto looked down upon the city his mother had sent him to. Set within a valley, it was the very model of peace and seclusion. The central piece was the human academy, named after the town of Kuo. It must have been a school day, as he saw many humans the same age as him in their school uniforms heading toward the city center. The sun was sweltering hot, even after he had changed into the school blazer and matching pants. He had no idea how the humans could handle that kind of heat. The rays of light beat down on him and sapped all the energy in his body. It would definitely take some getting used to, and he would have to move around at night primarily if he wanted to keep it from permanently affecting him. Not to mention, he could not allow the humans to notice his presence. Luckily, no one was around to see him use his wings for the moment or two he needed them, but he was sure it would not remain that easy. Devils were fortunate enough to look very similar to humans naturally, so no one had given him an odd look quite yet. That was good, considering his objective here was focused on not attracting unwanted attention. Until he had followers or at least some powerful friends, the shadows were not going to be safe for him to roam in. Just have to keep my eyes on the prize. The faster he completed his objectives, the faster he could return to his mother's side. If that was not enough to spur him forward, his personal goals aligned well with Kashina's wishes. His mother always told him the mammon were well known for wanting more than they could have, sometimes for better, but often for worse. He planned to turn his family's curse around, one battle at a time. Him being sent to the town of Kuo was not by chance, either. It was a well-known fact throughout the underworld that this place held great significance for all three of the major factions. That meant that, apart from other devils, he would be dealing with both variants of angels, fallen and otherwise. Though he had never met an angel, from the stories he heard from his mother, they were not ones to be underestimated. Especially the fallen since they fell from their god's grace for one reason or another. Tricks and underhanded tactics were their namesake, and so he would keep his guard up if he were to find one. But, he could care less about how politics boiled down between the three groups. He was raised as one of the extra demons, after all. Ousted, voluntarily or otherwise by the current devil government, the mammon were among those who avoided the 72 pillars at all costs. If his mission were successful, however, his mother hoped their name would return to the forefront of devil society. Naruto leapt down onto the street below and joined the crowd headed for the school grounds. Humans were the treasures and lifeblood that kept the three factions going after the Great War. They were the primary reason why Naruto had come to Kuo in the first place. For if the mammon were to return, they would need influence and the easiest way for a devil to gain influence was through martial strength. Sacred Gears, artifacts of power only born to those with human blood in their veins, were the key to gaining any kind of power in the world. Angels, fallen angels, and devils all were attracted in some way to that power and had found ways to incorporate these valuable humans into their ranks. At least with the devils, they had created the evil peace system that Naruto was now a part of with the king piece embedded inside of him. Though he only had one other piece to use for now, with time he could grow out his peerage to span the entire set. To grow and nurture that family was Naruto's goal, and it worked well with his mother's desires of total domination. If they were going to have any chance at returning from the outskirts of society, they would need a strong group of followers. And so, Naruto began his hunt for the strongest of humans within the grounds of Kuo Academy. Known to host the most gifted of humans, he had high hopes for what he would find inside. 
Unfortunately, he was quickly disappointed when he saw a group of boys being beaten senseless by a crowd of young women. Screams and shouts hinted that the culprits had been found peeping on the girls' locker room. If that was the kind of resource pool he was looking at, things were grim. Naruto continued with the crowd and found himself inside the school building as the bell began to ring for the first series of classes. Inside, the floor was a checkerboard tile and the building reeked of grandiose western architecture. There was a feeling in the back of his head that he was being watched. With a few cautious glances, he took in his surroundings in an attempt to locate the source of his discomfort. There, two young women on the second floor balcony overlooking the lobby. One leaned against the railing, with brown hair cut short away from her bespectacled eyes. The other was a stunning vixen that momentarily reminded Naruto of his mother. Long red hair and a set of crisp aquamarine eyes. What was even more noticeable and surely appealing to such perverts outside was her incredible bust size, especially in comparison to her shorter compatriot. Neither of them seemed threatening, in fact the crimson-haired beauty was smiling. If it was not for the fact he had lived with a woman for his whole life, he might have passed it off as nothing. But he could tell that behind those eyes, menacing plans were being concocted. If their familiar energy was anything to go by, the suspicions they had of each other were right. Devils, the lot of them. Interesting to see they had a similar idea of infiltrating the school to gather their pieces. No matter. As long as they did not approach him he would give them the same courtesy. When another group of kids came around the corner to head for class, Naruto got up from the column he had been leaning against and disappeared with the crowd. Time to see what the school of the gifted has to offer, Naruto said, as he entered a classroom at random. Rias, what do you think about him? Sona, the student council president, asked as the crowds began to fade for the first classes of the day. The other devil's presence had been quite obvious even before he had entered the school building. Lucky for him the humans could not feel such otherworldly energy, otherwise he would have stuck out like a sore thumb. He must have been new to the human realm to make such a common mistake. Hmm. Rias hummed, leaning against the rail next to her friend. I'm not sure who he is, but you could feel the energy inside, right? Yes. Sona adjusted her glasses. A king piece. Odd to find another one of us here. Is it really though? Rias had a hard look on her face. We can't be the only ones to see the value in this place. It was only a matter of time, really. I suppose so. Sona conceded. Her eyes flicked down the hall where Subaki, her vice president, approached. Do you plan on meeting him? Rias paused for a moment to consider her answer. Then, she just shrugged and gave her old friend an assuring smile. I don't think so. He doesn't seem like a troublemaker, so I think I will take a wait and see approach with luck he's just visiting the chances of a devil with such natural power just visiting their quaint little town were slim to none rias and sona both had an obligation to keep the peace and so of course the blonde's presence was a bit concerning however arranging a meeting out of the blue would only escalate the situation with time new opportunities would arise to meet with the new devil then i'll leave first Sona waved to her friend and passed her vice president, who bowed and followed her from behind. Rias hesitated a moment longer, her eyes lingering on the hallway their new friend had disappeared in. Her soft lips quirked as a bit of excitement came over her. Someone new to town was not always a bad thing. She hoped that if he were a friendly devil, they could make an acquaintance one day. For a gremory, an acquaintance one day soon meant an ally the next. And Rias Gramary was always looking to expand her family. See you later, Devil Kun. Naruto slumped back into his apartment, feeling quite exhausted after the first day of classes. What a boring set of material the teachers had them go over. The things the other children were learning was something Naruto had been taught many years ago. Perhaps humans were not all that similar to devils after all. To rest his body, he was thankful his mother had already prepared a dwelling of sorts in the human world. How she managed it, he had no idea, but the single bedroom flat would serve his needs well. The couch looked particularly inviting as he laid down on the dark cushions and felt his body sink into the material's creases. Now that he had a moment to think, he replayed the day over in his head to try and see if anything in particular stood out. He was not expecting any humans to openly brandish their powers, but at the same time, he had hoped there would be some inkling of potential in the masses he had surveyed during his outing. Unfortunately, apart from the female devils, none of the people he had come into contact with made their hidden strengths obvious. 
It seemed as though his objectives would take longer than he thought. For a moment, he even feared the other groups had gotten to the sacred gears before he had. But, if that were true, there would be little reason to stay in the town. Buried treasure must have remained then, and it was up to him to find it. What little rumors he had pointed to the existence of at least one sacred gear in the city. Obviously, it had been identified, though its user was not described. It was a variant of the twice critical, a relatively common dragon type gear. Whether or not it had already been claimed was unclear, but Naruto had to bet all three factions were scrambling to get a hold of it. If he kept an eye on those other devils, they might point him in the right direction. They could just as easily steer him wrong though, and until he met them, he could only assume they had no plans of helping him find his way. Naruto sighed and reached for the coffee table in front of him. The remote was there, and he figured the best way to get in touch with humans was to immerse himself with their media. Somehow, he doubted the experience would be as enlightening as he had once hoped. At the school, while he observed his classmates, he had kept an eye on the adults as well. There was nothing stopping a sacred gear from remaining dormant until a human had reached that age. That authoritative position also gave them a perfect camouflage. His homeroom teacher was particularly odd in that she seemed more interested in seducing her male students rather than teach them. In fact, her attention was on him the entire day. The other male classmates were not particularly happy about that, but Naruto had passed it off because he had posed as a new student. He did not need to be an expert to know her attitude and methods were very different than what was generally expected of an educational institution. She could have been someone, or something, of importance too. Those with power attract others with power. Naruto quoted his mother aloud. The sound of humans speaking to one another somehow lulled Naruto to sleep as his body slumped further into the couch's embrace. Living on his own was not so bad after all. In the dead of night, an explosion of energy rocked the landscape of the quiet town of Kuo. More accurately, a sudden release of a large amount of ki. Any kind of supernatural creature would be sensitive to such a strike and surely feel it. Humans, however, would never notice such a thing had happened right in their own backyard. That was what served to wake Naruto up from his nap as he almost rolled right off the couch. Holding his head in pain, he got up to the window and tried to pinpoint just where that energy had come from. He could still feel it inside of him, churning his stomach inside out. It was not something just any person could do. That kind of energy was reserved for very powerful, very rare individuals. And the only reason they would have to release that much is if they were in the thick of a fight. Unfortunately, whoever released that energy was completely off the radar now which should not have been possible. A release of energy like that was basically a beacon for someone to lock onto and follow. It should not have dissipated given that small amount of time. It could only mean that someone created a barrier to keep such emissions contained and hidden. Someone must be in real trouble for them to go that extent. Dealing with someone with that kind of power was exactly what Naruto was looking for. Going alone was asking for trouble, but beggars could not be choosers. He had to buy into the pot at some point, and the jackpot was looking better and better the more he felt that energy build up inside. Let's see what we can find. Naruto opened the balcony door and revealed his pair of devil wings. With a kickoff to get him started, he leapt from the apartment railing and into the sky above Kuo. Many lights were still on as the moon just began to crest. There were not very many people out for a stroll though, so it made things easy when he did not have to worry about being seen. The only problem was, he had no idea where the barrier might have been set up. If whoever built it was smart enough, they would not make it easily visible either. His best chance was to cover as much ground as fast as he could, and hope he ran into some sort of detectable magic presence. A release of key like that has to leave behind some sort of residue. Much to his frustration, nothing of the town seemed ordinary. The apparent skill these guys had to hide from him pissed Naruto off. When he found them, they were not going to get off easy. As Naruto flew over the park, he felt the familiar tinge of magic manipulation in the back of his head. When he passed into the area, the light bended around him and he could have sworn something pushed back against his body. Upon further inspection, he realized that his surroundings were imperfect replications of human trees, park benches, and other landscape touches that made the mark of an amateur. Jackpot, Naruto said, licking his lips in delight. He flew up until he exited the barrier and deployed his own magical circle. The crest of Mammon was a swirled pattern, colored in crimson. Using the circle as a focal point, 
Naruto pushed inward and forcefully made his way into whatever pocket dimension the people inside had created. Naruto was not one for subtlety, after all. The barrier quickly began to crack under pressure as Naruto poured more magical energy into his attack. Sparks flew as opposing magical forces met one another, but the glass-like barrier eventually shattered under the weight of his spell. Like a crystal ball dropped onto the ground, the light-bending wall shattered into millions of pieces. With the barrier down, Naruto flew toward the center of the park and landed on his feet. With one quick glance to take in the situation, Naruto realized he was outnumbered. In front of him were six people, of varying shapes and sizes, surrounding someone else whose energy matched that which he felt before. The park itself was wrecked from one hell of a battle. Both sides had taken a momentary break when the barrier went down, and neither group seemed to know what to do about his entrance. The one being accosted was a nine-tailed fox, one of the Kayubi Yukai. Her blood-red tails that fanned out behind her human form outed her pretty easily. He knew a bit about the Kayubi, as his mother told him that Naruto's father had been closely acquainted with one in the past. They were incredibly powerful creatures, but rarely were their kind ever found outside of Kyoto, where they ruled the other Yukai species. This particular Kayubi, apart from a few scratches, was no worse for wear from whatever battle that had already taken place. Her long hair that flowed down her back was colored the same as her enemy's blood. Crimson and dark. She wore a battle dress of some kind. A black bodysuit that covered from her thighs to her neck with matching boots and gloves. Those beady red feline eyes targeted him, sizing him up. She must have assumed he was another enemy, but perhaps she hoped he could be an ally as well. Lucky for her, he had no plans of attacking someone of her caliber. Though, her opponents did not look too bad either. From what he could tell, they were an assortment of devils but none that he could immediately recognize. They must have been from the extra demons, or perhaps they were strays. That would not explain why they were targeting the Yukai, except perhaps for her energy. But to fight a Yukai on their level was asking a little too much. Who the hell are you? One of the men shouted as Naruto finished analyzing the motley crew. The six assailants all looked like they were going to have a prickly demeanor. Well, he found out their secret so it made sense, he supposed. How did he make it through the barrier? Another one said, slightly worried. It was a considerably elaborate shield, and he was very lucky to stumble onto it. However, if they were to imply the barrier was powerful enough to keep him out, then they would be sorely disappointed. His mother would have punished him severely if something like that had defeated his magic. Doesn't matter, keep on the Kayubi. The first man turned his attention back to the nine tails and ice shards grew from his hands. The devils slowly diverted their attention back to their original target, leaving Naruto alone. What a rude bunch, he thought. He preferred to keep cool in these kinds of situations, but the one thing that really set him off was when he was ignored. To be insulted or belittled by an enemy was one thing but to have your presence rejected was something else entirely. Naruto narrowed his eyes as powerful demonic energy began to build up in his body. Attacking the Kayubi was their first mistake, but forgetting about him would be their last. Oi, bastards! The vulgar language got them to turn around again. The Kayubi had readied a fireball in her hands, but hesitated to retaliate when Naruto made his declaration. Naruto sneered, his switch had been flipped, Whenever his adrenaline got pumping, things started to get a bit loopy for him. His control slipped, and he started to enjoy the bloodlust inside of him. You got some balls, turning your back on me. Naruto's hands soon became fists as he fought to control his instincts. Let's see what you guys can do. A magical circle appeared in front of Naruto, not unlike the one he created before. Wah! His opponent's confusion quickly turned to shock as a dozen chains launched at them made of pure demonic energy, those chains were harmful to whoever their owner willed them to be. Right now, Naruto was not in the mood to hold back his strength as he directed the chains forward with an extended arm. The chains were also fast, too fast for the other devils to easily avoid. In quick order, the chains wrapped around two of the devils, pinning their bodies down. Pain quickly broke through their resistance, and they were forced to scream as the chains developed barbs that hooked deep into their skin. My energy the chains dot our powers the devils writhed on the ground as the bonds continued constrict around their bodies further they tried to describe the suffering as their bodies were enveloped by a powerful shroud of energy 
The dark fields of power were not Naruto's, but their own magical energies forcefully being pulled from their bodies. That's right, Naruto said with a sinister looking grin, these chains of mine can absorb energy, too. Naruto had planned to hold them down long enough until he had almost completely absorbed their power. Without the energy to use magic, devils were almost as worthless as a normal human in a fight. The chains were linked to his own demonic powers, and Naruto began to sense something dark rearing its head from inside their bodies the more energy he took from them. He narrowed his eyes as he tried to determine the source. What is this? This isn't from the devils, this is something much bigger. Deep inside of them, there was something foreign in their bodies that was releasing a foul energy. The cloaks of power around their bodies were quickly overtaken by a dark shroud. So strong was its release that a shock wave pushed outward from the two captured devils, and forced everyone to shield themselves. Naruto covered his eyes, taken aback by their incredible strength. He thought for sure that he had them on the ropes, but this unknown strength had surfaced when their backs were against the wall. Before long, the dark energy began to sink into his chains, turning them a sickly dark color. Have to cut the spell before it reaches back to me. With a wave of the arm, his spell circle was released. The chains disappeared from his opponents, their bodies slumped over in exhaustion. From the looks of them, their bodies were still suffering despite their power boost. If anything, Naruto's original goal to take them out of the fight had succeeded. That power could have been hiding in the others, and so Naruto was hesitant to try the same move twice. Now, the other four had chosen to sit out of the fight earlier and not help their comrades. At first, Naruto had believed they had collared themselves to prevent their friends from coming to further harm, but he started to realize they had no desire to help one another. More magical circles appeared, and a torrent of energy was launched at him, with their wounded comrades in the way. Too fast for him to dodge, Naruto was forced to create a circle of protection to stave off the attack. The torrent of energy sped across the battlefield, vaporizing the downed opponents in a split second. Blinded by the attack's overwhelming power, Naruto was pushed to the brink as he tried to maintain his shield. No good. Four against one is too much, under great pressure, the protective spell broke apart in front of him. By instinct, Naruto held up his arms to protect himself. He then felt a presence at his side, and then a great force pushed him to the ground. When he recovered, he saw the Kayubi in front of him, containing the enemy attack with one hand. With a smack from the back of her hand the attack was sent flying away. Fireballs formed in each of her hands, and above each tail. They were tinged white with Naruto recognized as the infamous strength of Kitsune Fox Fire. She unleashed the barrage of attacks, forcing the remaining devils to scatter across the battlefield to escape. Each fireball exploded into a fiery mess upon impact, taking with it a chunk of the surrounding area. Somehow, apart from glancing burns, the remaining four had managed to avoid lethal damage. This earned them a harsh glare from the nine tails as she began to build up an insane amount of power. Stay out of my way, boy, she said with a threatening growl attached. Getting saved by the person you were supposed to be rescuing was not the best feeling in the world. His eyes could barely follow her movements as she launched forward with incredible speed, appearing next to the closest devil. With one punch, she was able to break their magical defense and send them hurtling into the ground. Such strength was not focused solely on her human extremities, as the tails whipped at the devils too foolish to get close. Naruto dusted himself off and hesitated to leap back into the fight. He would probably just get in the woman's way, or worse, get himself attacked. Still, the adrenaline pumping through him refused to let him stay out of the way for long. He noticed that a couple of the devils had managed to avoid the Kyubi's focus and were creating a large magical circle between them. Releasing his wings, Naruto flew at them in an attempt to halt their counterattack. A combination attack required a great amount of practice, considering the depth of the calculations involved in most magic. If they were able to pull something like that off, then the attack was too dangerous to let them complete it. Moments before he reached them, an army of chains were unleashed from the depths of wherever the magical circle led to. Naruto shielded himself, but quickly found out the attack was not meant for him as it sailed past. The chains quickly found and latched onto the Kayubi, ensnaring themselves around her body like a bad weed. Her scream of pain echoed as the spikes dug into her skin, and he could feel the energy forced out of her body as the chains absorbed it all. This attack, it's so similar to mine but these chains aren't feeding the energy back to the devils. 
Where was all of that demonic energy being taken? The answer lied on the other side of the magical circle, as Naruto quickly figured out that the spell was not to create the chains, but summon them from another location. Different from his mother's spell in which demonic energy is given shape from the user's own body, these chains were physical creations imbued with the same dark magic he felt from the other two devils. The restraints forced Kayubi down to her knees as the remaining enemies joined in with their own chains. So, they were after her energy, after all. Naruto narrowed his eyes in confusion. What was their objective? What were they planning to use that energy for? Whatever the results were, they could not be good. The nine tails would die at this rate if he did not do something. Do I have to use that? The power left behind for him by his father passed on to him from Kashina. This might have been a good time as any to unleash it. But, if he could just break their concentration, then the fox might escape. No, he would find another way. It was not time to reveal his trump card yet. I told you guys. Naruto scowled, building up more energy, not to ignore me. With the release of his magic, a maelstrom of energy released and forced the ground beneath his feet to buckle and crack. A shroud of demonic power built around him as Naruto summoned another magical circle, then three more, and soon a dozen appeared in the sky surrounding them. The devils, at first completely focused on the task at hand, quickly grasped the danger surrounding them. Unfortunately, they were either unable or unwilling to cease their absorption of the Kyubi's strength and offered no defense against his attack. This ends now. From the circles came more chains with sharpened ends, all headed straight for the devils. The spears pierced straight through their bodies, forcing them to double over in pain. They wailed in pain as more and more of the attacks collided with their body. No mercy was offered, even after they were forced to release their own attack on the Kyubi. Devils are pretty resilient. Naruto tightened his hand into a fist as the chains began to constrict. But, we all have our limits. Only when the last devil's body ceased moving did Naruto release his spell. The chains receded back into the portals, and he felt his energy return. Despite winning, he could not find it in himself to be proud of the bloody spectacle in front of him. True, his mother had taught him to fight with no heed for his opponent's life, but he detested the brutality he was forced to deploy against them. From the corner of his eye, he saw the Kitsune struggle against the few chains still wrapped around her body. Despite their circles disappearing, the physical bonds remained attached to her body. He could not tell how much energy they took, but he was sure that the creature in front of him was severely weakened from the encounter. With a strangled roar, the Kayubi shook off the rest of the chains. From the strength she had left, the Nine Tails carried herself some distance from Naruto in a vain effort to find safety. Her skin began to fizzle and smoke as the wounds healed themselves, albeit slowly. She was out of breath, and he was then very sure she was unable to fight him even if she wanted to. Naruto walked over to her, cautiously taking each step in an attempt to not antagonize her. Hey, you alright? He asked. The Yukai shied away from his touch. Despite their common enemy, she still did not trust him. He thought that it was fair for her to feel that way, considering he was a devil too. Still. He could tell those wounds were going to be difficult to handle without enough energy, and he could barely feel her presence at all. Kayubi collapsed to her knees from exhaustion. Instinctively, her hands covered her chest as pain racked her body. Naruto decided to keep his distance and respect the demon's privacy. If he were to go to her, he had no healing ability of his own to help anyway. His concern was useless to the Kayubi. Ugh. Damn them. Those chains stole my energy. Kayubi's breathing was irregular and her speech came out in labored pants. When the wounds remained on her body after the energy had dissipated, Naruto knew that her power alone was not enough to save herself. The only thing Naruto could think of was to use his evil piece, but that would bring her back as part devil. He knew of the pride associated with the Kayubi Yukai, and a full-blooded one like her meant that she would not be a fan of such an idea. But, they were running out of options. Hey, I think I have an idea of how to help. Shush shut up, devil. I do not need your help. Her words were harsh, but she did not even have the energy to push him away. Naruto knelt down next to her and was glad to see she offered no resistance. Whether it be from weakness or an acceptance of his help, he could not tell. Come on, at least listen to what I have to say. When she offered no words of resistance, he took it as an invitation to continue. I have something that can bring you back to full strength, 
but it's going to turn you into a half devil. Just the thought of it instantly made the Kayubi cringe, but she remained silent, hopeful. Naruto continued with his pitch in hopes she would accept. If nothing else, it would save her life. It means joining my family, too. I know how powerful the Nine Tails are, since my father was partnered with one once, so I don't plan on holding you back. The thing is, this is a deal you can't go back on. Naruto hiked a thumb over his shoulder, toward where the devil remains were. I'm going to guess they aren't the last ones to show up trying to get your power. I can protect you more than if you were to go on your own. How about it? The poison inside of her had taken most of Kayubi's energy, making it difficult for her to speak. Her features remained stiff as she thought over the offer that was clearly not to her liking. Naruto always believed everyone should be given a choice with what happened in their life, but Kayubi's choice was not particularly flattering either way. He would rather not watch her die though, so when she gave him the slightest of nods, he began to smile brightly. From within his chest, he beckoned the mutation piece to come forward and held it in his palm. With his king ability, he could sense how many pieces Kayubi would be worth. Lucky for him, a mutation piece could be used on someone for any position, regardless of how many pieces they were worth. Eleven pieces. His eyes lit up as if he had found the buried treasure of some long dead pirate. Coming to Kuo was not such a bad idea then, if he found a powerful vixen such as this. Not to mention, he could not ignore her feral allure. Kayubi groaned in pain, shaking him from his reverie. Without any more time wasted, he inserted the piece into her chest and observed the energy of the evil piece surge through her body. The healing she once struggled to complete started again, but this time the wounds began to close with great speed. In under a minute, the fox was already up onto her own two feet without his help. Devil life force now flowed through her veins, just as her yukai did. As a kitsune, she was already on the high end of spiritual energy and power among her kind and with nine tails she was considered equal to some of the most powerful devils. Now with devil blood surging through her veins and an evil piece embedded into her chest, she had ascended to a level rarely reached by any newly resurrected devil. Naruto watched as she began to stretch her body and get used to the new strength. This was his first time seeing someone be resurrected, not to mention by his own hand. Not bad. Kayubi offered as her observation. Welcome back, Naruto said with a friendly thumbs up. The crimson haired woman scowled, not amused by his little joke. She crossed her arms and seemed to wait, impatiently, for him to say something. So, what am I supposed to do? Do not expect me to bow or call upon you with honorifics. You have not earned it. Naruto sighed, starting with conditions of the relationship was really exhausting. Hey, I'm not trying to make you a slave or anything. Like I said, we are partners. He shrugged. Maybe she was educated enough to know about the devil system? It was worth a shot. If you know anything about the evil peace system, you know that as the head of a family or peerage, I have the king piece. Their most powerful partner and member of the family is the queen piece, which is what I made you. Kayubi's eyes lit up upon hearing that she was considered a queen, though it should not have been all that new to her. If his memory served, the Nine Tails often acted in leadership roles for the Yukai so she was already royalty anyway. Still, that bit of interest he hoped was enough to keep her from arguing against it. So, Queen San, what would you like me to call you? Do you have a name? He gave her a cheeky smile as he leaned in close to tease her. The Nine-Tailed creature pushed him away, quite forcefully. His usual attitude did not seem to mesh well with her serious personality. You have not earned the right to know my name let alone call me by it. For now, Kayubi will suffice. HMPH. Okay, Kayubi. You can call me Naruto. There was an awkward moment after the introductions were over until Naruto remembered what time it was. Come on, we better get back to my place and rest. I can fill you in on my plans tomorrow. Kayubi shrugged and followed behind him without another bit of interaction. The silence was uncomfortable, but Naruto had to remember the entire situation was pretty foreign to her. The idea that he had just gotten a queen, and a powerful one at that, had not completely sunk in with his mind either. And so, the two partners left the battlefield of the park. Despite it being their first meeting place, both were eager to leave it behind. Rias, they've gone. Shall we follow? Akano reported, still in her Miko shrine outfit. Rias and the rest of her peerage hid within the trees of the park. They had come in the middle of the battle and had expected to take part. 
but were pleasantly surprised to see the new devil and his nine-tailed friend finish the interlopers off. No, that won't be necessary. They have dealt with enough trouble for the night, I'd say. Despite the battle being resolved, Rias was not smiling. She would have to report such an incident to her brother and Sona to determine just what those devils were doing out here, in the human realm. Not only that, but hunting a Kyubi of the ruling clan. The only saving grace was that the devils were not affiliated with any of the 72 pillars, and so she could only assume they were strays. However, they were quite well organized for a bunch of random servants, so she wondered if they could really be extra demons. Her curiosity did not end there. Who was that blonde devil? What was his clan? What were his intentions? Whatever he wanted could not be so innocent to pass up a wounded Kitsune as he brought her into his peerage. She would not forgive him if he caused trouble in her territory, so she would need to keep a close eye on him. That magical circle. Dot and that crest. Who is this Naruto? Indeed, she had many questions for her dear brother that night. The faint sounds of an alarm forced Naruto out of his dreams and back into the real world. He had been enjoying himself in the presence of his mother back in the underworld, a place he sorely wished to be. To be taken from such a pleasant dream made him scowl as he struggled to open his eyes against the morning sun. Sleeping caused all of his senses to dull, and so he could not tell where Kayubi was. When they arrived at his apartment last night, Naruto had offered her the bed to take. Considering the situation, it felt like the only appropriate course of action. Surprisingly, she refused him and had chosen instead to meditate on the floor in his living area, from what little he had gleaned from his interactions with the Kitsune was that she had great pride in herself. He figured that accepting his kindness was a way of showing weakness. I hope she cuts the attitude soon though, dot she was really difficult. Despite the fact he saved her life and offered a place as his partner, Kayubi had dropped all niceties when she spoke to him. Somehow, he still had not earned the right to even carry on a proper conversation with someone of her ability. At this rate, they were not going to function well as a team. Naruto released the yawn building up inside of him. Carefully, he rubbed his eyes and decided that it was truly time to wake up. A lot of things would have to be resolved today, so there was no point in resting further. Well, maybe I can. In front of him, an immensely powerful presence released a burst of ki. Naruto's eyes burst open as he saw Kayubi launch one of her fists, covered in fire, at his face. He forced himself to roll out of the way and grunted in pain as he fell onto the wooden floor. Now on the ground, he managed to recover himself and rise to his knee. His eyes locked with his unsuspected opponent, who had rounded the bed to stand above him with a menacing look in her eyes. What? Naruto's confusion quickly shifted as he grasped the situation at hand. His voice took a heavy tone as his own eyes began to match the harshness of the nine tails in front of him. So, you are trying to run away? You were right, Kayubi said, holding her attack. The devils last night would not be the first, or the last to come for me. After observing you for the night, Kayubi's energy release ceased to end. He knew that before long, the shroud surrounding her would start to damage him. I know you aren't strong enough to help me. So, you turn on me just like that? Naruto asked, despite knowing his attempt at diplomacy was futile. He had to buy time for the magical circle beneath their feet to develop. If he were too callous, she would quickly discover his plan and end him right there. Just like he said last night, every devil had their limit. Naruto would simply not survive a hit from Kayubi at that range. Your devil piece might have saved my life, but you as a partner are useless to me. Kayubi looked down upon him as if he were vermin. This only reinforced his belief she saw herself as better than not only himself, but all devils. Whether her dislike was extended to other species or just his own, he could not say, but as she was now, he could not talk her down. I only have one choice. Are you saying a life on the run is better than what I offered? Naruto knew that if she somehow managed to kill him, even if he were not part of the 72 pillars, she would be labeled a stray devil and hunted by more than just the enemies from last night. Devil society did not take kindly to deserters, regardless of their reason. Kayubi's frown only seemed to deepen the farther he took the conversation. My pride was deeply wounded to have to accept help from a treacherous devil like yourself, Kurama's fist again was turned alight with fire. My mother made the mistake of trusting your kind once, and now she's gone. If there is one thing I will keep, it is my dignity. As she finished speaking, he noticed her body tense up, she swung her arm low in an attempt to finish him in one strike. 
If the strength behind her attack did not kill him, the white flames around her arm would. At that moment, Naruto forced the magical circle to peer beneath them. Taken by surprise, Kayubi's attack slowed by a fraction of a second when her attention was diverted. With that time, Naruto sent them both through the portal to a place more fitting for such a fight. This is ridiculous. Naruto was forced to fight first thing in the morning, before his power had fully reawakened. He had already dodged two deadly attacks meant to finish him off in one hit, so he was quite awake. The worst part was, he was still stuck in his loose fitting pajamas and not anything close to appropriate. On the other hand, he was not the one that picked the fight. Now, he and Kayubi were deep in the mountains that surrounded the town of Kuo. The last thing he needed was her to damage his apartment and have to explain that to the human owners. The teleportation had been a bit sloppy, and was not his best work, but he had been under a considerable amount of duress. The nine tails now stood across from him, some ways down the opposite end of the field. Once they had exited the portal together, there was a tense moment before they quickly separated from one another. Whether she had any kind of honor or not, he had no idea, but at the very least she seemed interested in seeing his capabilities as she waited for him to make the first move. You know, I really do want to have you join my family, Naruto said after a while, his voice shifting from soft to sharp as a knife's edge. But, at the same time, I can't accept someone who's willing to turn on me just for their own twisted sense of pride. Kayubi narrowed her eyes, but chose to say nothing in return. What was there left to say? She made her choice and now it was his turn as king to put her in the proper place of queen, whether she liked it or not. A nine tails strength is nothing to shrug off, I've got to be careful. Naruto decided that to win, he would have to go all out from the start, with Kayubi's strength increased by a considerable multiplier with his evil piece, she would be able to resist any kind of normal magic. His only chance was to get a hold of her with his chains and absorb her energy to force her into surrender, but she already knew his capabilities from last night. First, I'll have to use something new to weaken her. Come on, boy. Kayubi shouted over the distance. Her patience must have been wearing thin. I waited all night to see just how strong you were. Don't disappoint me. Naruto narrowed his eyes at her taunt. He wondered why she had spared him from simply killing him in his sleep. So, she wanted to see whether he was worth being a partner or not. Well, he would try not to disappoint. I'll give you a treat. Naruto began to build up his energy, so much so that it became visible around his body. No one has seen me use this before, save for my mother. Very well then. Come at me. Kayubi accepted his strength with a smirk, readying her body for a hit. Sacred Gear Naruto summoned into his hand a dagger of sorts, unique in that it had a three-pronged tip, flying thunder god. Father, lend me your strength. Kayubi had to admit to herself that she had not expected a devil of all things to have a sacred gear. Was he some hybrid? Or, she narrowed her eyes, did he steal such power from an unsuspecting victim? Either way, she was not one to be defeated by a simple toy like that. She had come too far to be defeated now by some brat. Every stain on her pride had to be removed before she could allow herself to forgive those that had wronged her. The only way she could go forward was to fight all of those who stood in her way. In response to the weapon summon, she drew energy to her hands and tails. With her power, eleven fireballs began to grow. Last night she had been careless in her aim and the devils had managed to survive. She vowed not to make the same mistake twice. Take this. Kayubi released all eleven with a single powerful throw. The blonde threw his new weapon in her direction, but her crimson eyes quickly noted that it was off course. If he had held out any hope to hit her with the dagger, he was in for a rude surprise. Not that he would find out, since her fireballs would vaporize him before his dagger even hit the ground. The harmless thing sailed over her shoulder as she refused to even step out of the way. With her arms crossed in satisfaction, she watched the devil disappear as the fireballs erupted as one. An ear-shattering explosion rocked the battlefield as a respectable crater formed in the spot once occupied by Naruto. HMPH. What a week! Kayubi's eyes widened when she sensed his presence behind her. Before she even had time to fully turn, his fist rammed into her stomach. Not as strong as her own, but it still sent the air flying from her lungs. When he pulled back she thought she might have a chance to recover, but his leg was sent right for her head in a daring follow-up kick. The air behind him whipped up and she knew he had enhanced his attack with demonic energy. 
If I don't block this, it'll be trouble. With her arms up, she met his kicks full force and felt herself sliding back along the ground. Her defense was strong enough to weather it, but she had taken a considerable amount of damage just from those two hits. Kayubi could not afford for him to get close again. Not bad. There was some distance between them now, and she felt that she had a moment of respite. Somehow, he had escaped the fireball attack and managed to end up behind her. She ruled out any kind of magical circle because the calculations involved would have taken too long to get precisely behind her before the fox fire hit its mark. The only explanation was his sacred gear, the dagger that Naruto had just finished picking up from the ground where it had fallen harmlessly past her. The sacred gear allows him to teleport to that weapon's spot. He did throw it before her attack had hit. Somehow, he could instantaneously teleport using that thing. If that was the case, she would have to keep an eye on the dagger and avoid it at all costs. As long as she could predict his attack angle then she could prepare a counter. Rather than sit idle, Kayubi felt her best strategy was to press forward and knock him off balance. From his performance last night, she knew he was respectable with long-range magic. If she stayed too far, he could use those chains of his to sap her energy. Here I come. With a powerful kickoff, the nine-tailed fox launched herself right at her opponent. Fist reared back, she sent it right at Naruto's head as the distance between them closed in an instant. Somehow, he read her move and was able to lower his head out of the trajectory of her attack. Not one to be deterred, Kayubi pulled back and started to send a barrage of kicks and jabs at his center mass. They would not hit as hard as if she focused all her strength into one hit, but she knew she was more likely to overwhelm his defense through speed. A pitiful spellcaster like himself would buckle eventually under her stamina. Much to her surprise, however, Naruto did not give in so easily. He kept up with her lethal dance of flesh with his own body. For every kick, he would weave his body out of the way, and for every fist he would slap it away with his own arm. Whoever taught him his defensive skills was impressive, Kayubi had to admit. Let's see how you handle this. Her body was again covered in energy this time supplemented with her new demonic strength, and then converted into a cloak of flames. Now, each strike carried with it fire that was sure to hit him whether it be a glancing blow or not. Understandably, he grasped the new reach of her attack and leapt back and out of range. But this time, he was too slow. From the fire around her arm, she quickly conjured another fireball and threw it at him. Now that he was in air, he would have a much more difficult time her perfectly aimed attack. The fire cloak had merely been an excuse for her to gather the necessary energy for another ranged attack, but disguise it to fool the so far cautious devil. Just as she expected him to, Naruto threw the sacred gear weapon at her again. This time, she would not allow him to get close. Kayubi sent one of her tails out and smacked the weapon far off course to ensure he could not surprise her again. In the meantime, her fireball had reached him. Rather than teleport or defend himself with a magical circle, Naruto instead chose to slap away the ball of energy with the back of his hand. Since she had conjured it together rather fast, the attack was small enough to be pushed away by a devil with his strength level. However, her fox fire still severely burned his hand and arm as the attack was just barely diverted away. That was very foolish of you to block with your bare hand. Kayubi snickered, how the tables had turned so quickly. You might as well consider that arm useless now. Fine, Naruto responded through gritted teeth. No matter how tough he acted though, she knew he was in pain. I only need one arm to beat you, anyway. Oh, big words. She mocked his attempt to fight back, though she had to admit she was a little excited to see what he had left to show. The power of a nine-tailed fox was not one to be underestimated, and Kayubi had considered her victory assured since the start of the fight. The sacred gear was a surprise but one she had already analyzed and built a counter for. His resistance had gotten her adrenaline pumping in a rare turn of events, and she knew her decision to wait to kill him had been validated considering how much fun she had toying around with him. Without that arm, his defense up close will be useless. It's over, Kayubi shouted as she surged forward. Naruto disappeared in a flash before she even made it halfway to him. She angled her head to look back at the weapon and knew he would spawn there. With practiced ease, she created another fireball on the tip of one of her tails and launched it backward. Your teleportation isn't instantaneous after all. I'll hit you right as you come out of the portal. So focused on her overwhelming victory was she that Kayubi had again underestimated Naruto. From her observation, 
she had only seen one facet of many that were involved with his father's sacred gear. The three-pronged weapon, affectionately recognized as a kanai by his mother, was only the vessel for the sacred gear's true power. You were right, Kayubi, Naruto appeared again, but not at the location of his sacred gear, but directly behind her. This battle is over. The fireball hit, vaporizing Naruto's kanai and the dirt and rock surrounding it. But, Naruto had not chosen to teleport to his weapon, but rather the seal he had planted on the nine-tailed fox. The true source of his sacred gear's strength was not the weapon, but the seal that Naruto could plant on anything and teleport to on a whim. I planted one on her last night when I offered the evil peace. Naruto's original intention had been to use the seal to teleport to her should she never need assistance. He had never wished to use it in this context, but he had to admit it was a well-planned move regardless. How, Kayubi struggled to articulate her surprise, but was silenced as a mammon magic circle appeared between them. From the portal, Naruto's demonic energy took shape into chains and wrapped themselves around Kayubi's body. Arms pinned to her sides, Kayubi was too slow to stop the initial attack from entrapping her. Not one to give up though, he quickly felt her begin to resist his hold. Have to absorb her energy, fast, Kayubi must have felt the pull on her strength as he forcefully ripped it from her since her struggling only increased. With a bone-chilling roar, she released all of her feral might and was able to free her arms. The chains were pushed away, but quickly leapt back to life and wrapped around her wrists. You really are amazing. Naruto held up his arm and focused, but, there is something I forgot to tell you about this power. All around them, more magical circles appeared and released dozens of the chains. Despite her fury, even Kayubi was overwhelmed by their number. Her arms and legs found themselves being pulled apart the more she struggled. Her body began to take shape of an X as his attack literally pulled the fight from her. All the while, he continued to take away the energy she had been swinging around so brashly a moment ago. Ah! Uh, damn you! Devil! With the last of her strength, she used it to curse him. The true strength behind the mammon chains is that they can be pulled and pushed, but never broken, his mother's words flew from his tongue as if they were his own. The same goes for the promises and bonds we forge with others. Once a mammon takes hold of something, we don't let go until our dying breath. Just as his mother had chosen his father and taken him and his power for her own, Naruto had given Kayubi his one evil piece without hesitation. That meant that no matter whether she liked it or not, she would be his for the rest of his days. Too bad for her devils lived for a pretty damn long time, too. Another devil might kill you for insubordination. It would set an example and give me another chance to find a proper servant. Naruto continued to speak and express his feelings. If Kayubi was only going to listen when she completely and utterly beaten, then he had to get his words in now. I'm not that kind of devil, and I don't want some other servant. Naruto waved the magic circles away. The chains disappeared and allowed Kayubi to topple over onto the ground. Her energy was now inside of him, free for him to do whatever he wanted with it. I want a partner. Naruto reminded her of his initial offer. I want you to join my family because you want to, not because I'm forcing you to. How? Dot did I lose? Kayubi's voice croaked out from her fatigued body. She still did not have the strength to stand, nor look at him in the eye. Still, she made her desire clear to him. You were overconfident, Naruto said with an air of finality. Whether it was the strength of your attacks, or your analysis of my technique. You were so sure of your own thoughts that you underestimated me. Kayubi scowled, a low growl building from within her throat at his words. I'll be the first to admit I am physically weaker than you. You have a stronger spiritual energy than I do, too, Naruto said with a shrug. Because of those things, I took you seriously and went all out from the start. He knew from her performance last night that she was worthy to hold the queen piece inside of her. Naruto would never argue against her ability, or strength. All he wanted was for her to accept that he too could be strong enough to be her king. I was. Dot too arrogant, huh? Kayubi reflected on her loss as he approached her. His words rang in her head over and over again, and she could only find truth in them. From the start, she had considered him nothing more than a brat, the offspring of a species she had nothing but hatred inside her heart for. And yet, because he respected her strength he was able to overcome her power. Talk about irony. Naruto was above her now, and she struggled to lift her head. If he were to kill her, she would at least look him in the eye. 
that was the least she could do to keep her pride. As her end approached, Kayubi's thoughts turned to her mother, she too had met her fate to the devils, and the other Kitsune and Yukai had just left her to die. Kayubi had always believed that if her mother had never associated herself with the devils in the first place, she never would have been betrayed by them. Because of her feelings for one particular devil, she threw her life away and took away the only family Kayubi ever had. Now, this boy in front of her dared to ask her to join him? The stupidity of the sentiment would have made her laugh if her body had any strength left. Their eyes met as he knelt down to join her on the ground. In those blue orbs, she could not sense any killing intent. His hand fell onto her shoulder and Kayubi could feel her energy slowly being restored. Yo you're giving. My energy back? She asked, incredulous. Of course. I just needed to take it from you long enough for you to calm down. His apparent naivety baffled Kayubi. With her strength returned, she could easily finish him off. What if I attack you again? Despite the obvious connotations of the question, her voice lacked the bite that implied she was willing to back it up with action. Then I really will kill you, Naruto said with little hesitation, forcing their eyes to meet again. I understand that I didn't make my feelings clear before, so you were unsure if I was fit to protect you. But, I've said all I need to say in this little spar of ours. If you come at me again, then I know there isn't any hope for you. The faith he offered in her was astounding in that he gave her a second chance. Kayubi had to respect him all the same that this would be her last chance to get a free pass from him. If she could not finish him the next time, then he surely would finish her. To be considered family with a devil is just, Kayubi was barely able to stop herself from uttering the rest of her disgust. Well, you best get used to it. You're a devil too, now. Naruto stood back up and gave her some space. The silence following his statement gave her the chance to stand on her own feet. Most of her energy had been returned to her with nothing but goodwill on his part. Kayubi could never imagine a scrawny little thing like him could be a devil capable of standing up to her, but she was wrong. Just as she was wrong about her mother's feelings, and perhaps her choices too. Maybe following this devil would give her the answers she needed. Kayubi, Naruto turned to face her, his tone serious. I can tell you're angry and restless inside from something in your past. Kayubi's shoulders locked as he seemed to read her thoughts. Was she so transparent he saw through her that fast? There is no way I can know what in your past is bothering you so much, but I promise to help you fix it, Naruto said with a fresh smile. That's what it means to be in a family, after all. The pure honesty behind his conviction brought an odd warmth to her chest. For some reason, she almost believed his words just as they were. Kayubi held herself back from completely trusting him, but she would admit his words brought her comfort. Very well. Kayubi sighed. With hands on her hips, she offered him a toothy grin. I will accept my place as your queen, Naruto. For now, at least. Her proclamation of allegiance brought out another smile. This one she could sense true happiness behind and she had to force herself not to let his feelings spread to her. Thanks, Kayubi, Naruto said with what could only be satisfaction shining in his grin. Now, let's ow. Kayubi narrowed her eyes when he suddenly yelped in pain. Then she noticed that his arm was still wounded from her earlier attack. She doubted he knew any kind of healing technique, otherwise he would have fixed himself by now. For all his talk about being capable, he floundered in that aspect. Still, maybe this was her moment to be of some use. Extend your arm, she requested, positioning herself a hair's breadth away from him. Naruto looked at her carefully, obviously suspicious of her request. Do you think he'll turn on you so easily? My pride would not allow that. A growl followed her defensive statement. Of course I trust you. Naruto responded with surprising frankness. I just didn't know your healing powers could extend to healing others. Kayubi raised a brow but did not push the issue farther. You are correct. Normally, it doesn't let me heal others, however. With a tender hold, she took his hand in hers and began an exchange of energy. What the? Naruto was astonished as Kayubi was enveloped in a shroud of bright light that was almost enough to blind him. In the blink of an eye her body had disappeared into the light that now flowed into his arm and the rest of his body. Kayubi had used the power of the Kitsune where they could possess a host body and leech their life energy. Since its creation, her species had found many other crafty uses for the ability. In this case, she could offer him a limited version of her own healing ability by using her energy inside of him. 
This would be one of the many times Kayubi sensed she could be of help to her new king. In her chest, the idea of being useful to someone served to lighten her mood, if just a little bit. A bit stuffy inside here. The comment echoed across his brain, tricking his ears. Kayubi, where are you? For a high class devil, he was slow to catch up. I'm inside of you, boy. Think of it as a power of mine. Naruto quickly calmed himself as her healing powers began to take over. The burnt skin began to sizzle and smoke and heal itself. Within just a few minutes, his arm was returned to its original appearance before the wound had been suffered. Now that's a useful power. I can feel your energy inside me, now that you mention it, he could feel her energy course through in his chest, like water waves coursing by. And now? What's your plan? Naruto knew it was another school day and had planned to attend class. There was no need for him to keep up his appearances for the sake of sheer attendance or to understand the coursework. His only reason for being at Kuo Academy was, in the end, to find more members worthy of joining his peerage. Kayubi was a great first addition, considering her strength and natural aptitude for the queen position, but his mother would need more convincing before she believed him ready to take on more evil pieces. That meant he had a lot of work to do in the form of scouting the town for potential. It was no doubt going to drag on and be a bore, but it was a necessary evil. We head for the human school. Keep an eye out for anything unique. With his business in the mountains concluded, Naruto created a magical circle beneath his feet and teleported back home. After such a workout, he needed a proper shower. Ah, Naru kun. Tell me more about where you're from. The woman Naruto knew as a teacher practically moaned into his ear as she sat upon his school desk. I absolutely love this blonde hair of yours. In front of him was the person that was supposed to be considered his homeroom professor, Fuka. She offered no last name and though he found it odd at first, there were plenty of other quirks about the woman that made him turn a blind eye to such a minor detail. For example, the closeness she pushed on certain male students like himself by propping herself upon their desks and unashamedly flirting with them. Fuka sensei, are you sure this? Naruto's eyes flicked down at his desk, where her rear sat, barely covered by a pencil skirt that came down to half her thigh, is appropriate. The red-headed woman, that he noted was not far from his mother in sheer physical resemblance, raised a teasing brow that was soon followed by a smirk. It was rather apparent early on she cared little for the rules that had been put in place by humans to separate an authority figure like herself from the student body, but she liked to play along at times in what he could only guess was for her own enjoyment. I don't know what you mean, Naruto-kun. The honorific came out more like a seductive purr than an actual word. I'm just enjoying a bit of a teacher's conference with my new favorite student. Naruto's robin egg eyes glanced around the room and quickly picked up on the ire of the other males. Clearly, she had offered them some capacity of the same shtick in the past, and they had grown jealous with his special attention. He wanted to believe her attention was nothing but friendly teasing, but there was something in his gut that said otherwise. This one reeks of crows. In this case, Kayubi seemed to agree. Rather, she became the voice of his gut from inside of Naruto's chest. So, she isn't normal after all. Normal was a stretch in relation to his teacher, but his meaning went farther than her personality. If Kayubi's suspicions were correct, then it meant the woman in front of him was no human. Em, I could just eat you up. Those whisker marks are especially cute, Fuka said with a sultry tone. She had basically been on top of him since class had started. With a daring kiss on his forehead, Fuka ended her teasing early. I have something I need to take care of, so we can continue this tomorrow, Naruto-kun. Naruto narrowed his eyes as the busty female quickly wrote some instructions on the board and left them with a simple wave. Before the other boys could even bother to converge on him, Naruto was already halfway out the door. As if he were going to let her get away so easily. Let's follow her. See if anything interesting turns up. Something interesting had indeed come to fruition in Naruto's strategy to follow Fuka. Unfortunately, interesting meant conflict was inevitable this time around. Now, he had to salvage things before they got too far out of hand. Fuka had led them to a church on the outskirts of town. Not an odd sight in the town, by any means. What was odd is that she chose to not go inside but rather stay out. For a short time, it appeared as though she were almost trying to see through the building's walls themselves as she remained stock still. Most telling of all were Fuka's raven pair of wings that softly fluttered behind her back. A fallen angel, huh? 
Her forward approach to speaking with the schoolboys was starting to make more sense. Fallen angels were known for being seductive and that went for either gender. They were also well known for making servants out of those that fell in love with their looks, similar to succubi. Oh boys! Fuka cooed, waving toward the church. I have a proposition for you. Come out and play with me. What an annoying sow! Kayubi was clearly not amused at her cutesy tone, and Naruto had to admit that it grated against his ears as well. Beneath that playful demeanor, however, Naruto was sure he had sensed something else. Those eyes of hers burned with purpose. Not long after Fuka began her catcalls did a few men in robes emerge from the large wooden doors. Anyone could see from their eyes that they were entranced by her looks. With but a simple motion of the finger, she had them approach her without any hesitation. Naruto grimaced, men of the church were quite weak. Fallen angels and the servants of God never get along. Is she trying to tempt them? Before she could welcome the entranced young men into her arms, a spear of light came crashing down from the sky. It embedded itself into the ground near the priests and proceeded to explode into a bright light. The blast released a heavy amount of energy, and Naruto was forced to shield his eyes. The humans' life forces were extinguished in the blast that stopped just short of hitting Fuka. Fuka looked somewhat disappointed as the energy died down. Something told Naruto that she had been expecting such a thing to happen, given her rather relaxed stance. Her violet eyes shifted to the sky above to greet the two shadowy figures with the sun at their backs. Welcome, Tenshi san. Her overly friendly greeting was followed by a wave. Then, Naruto noticed her eyes narrow into something he akin to dangerous. I was wondering whether you would join me or not. Her voice changed. Kayubi noticed the shift in attitude as well. Fuka's mask had been lifted to reveal her true nature. Her mission all along had not been to convert some weak hearted priests, but to lure out these angels. Without a doubt, turning an angel was a much greater prize than simply acquiring some servants. Quiet yourself, fallen scum, said the male angel, a young man in a simple white robe. His short black hair and piercing eyes gave him a handsome, yet oddly intimidating visage. We have come to offer you God's forgiveness, fallen San. The woman spoke up next, her long pink hair flowing down her back. She seemed rather soft and frail, more fitting of what Naruto had expected to see in an angel. Oh, is that so? If Fuka were concerned, she did not show it well. She shrugged, offering her arms out in mock surrender. Then, come and get me. In the arms of the male angel, a golden sword of light was crafted from nothingness. With his compatriot armed in turn with a purple bow and arrow of light, the pair were ready to take the fight to the fallen. Fuka, on the other hand, did not bother to arm herself with a weapon. Instead, she simply stood there waiting for them to validate their promise. Prepare yourself. The male angel impatiently swooped down toward Fuka. Sasuke kun, wait, his companion shouted after him, but there was no talking to him now. Now that's more like it, Fuka said with a playful smirk. With an outstretched arm, she summoned a long spear of light, colored pink, and used her wings to meet Sasuke in the sky. The weapons hit one another with a spark of energy between them as the energies fought against one another. Despite falling from heaven, the unforgiven angels were still fully capable of replicating and using the same light energy as God's servants. For all intents and purposes, the two of them were evenly matched in the quality of their weapons, so what mattered was the individual skill. Fuka and Sasuke separated, only to have their weapons meet again and again in the sky as the two collided against each other. With their close proximity to one another, the archer angel was unable to support her friend. Rather clever of his teacher, thought Naruto. Damn you! Sasuke grunted as he forced all of his strength behind his sword strike. Getting annoyed, Tenshi san, Fuka whispered back, into Sasuke's ear. Her smirk only served to annoy him more. Take this! In his other hand, Sasuke spawned another sword and swung at Fuka's blind spot. The attack broke through Fuka's defense and seemed as if it hit. She grunted in pain and forced herself to drop to the ground. Sasuke was relentless though, and flew down to strike her with all of his might. That was when Naruto noticed his teacher's strained breathing turn back to normal. She was smiling of all things as someone was seconds from killing her. The angel's wings. They're switching, Kayubi said unable to hide her astonishment. The kitsune was right. Sasuke's wings were flickering back and forth between black and white. Rather than tempt him through lust, 
it seemed Fuka would take him through fury. Not just Sasuke, but his compatriot seemed to be losing her will as well. She had not fired a single arrow, and yet her wings were changing too. He noticed in her eyes that she bore great concern for the man she was paired with, and Naruto realized her affection and concern was borderline lust in itself. If he fell, she would too. Just as Sasuke's blade came down upon her head, Fuka shifted her body out of the way. His body extended past her as he lost balance. Her hand went out and wrapped around his sword hand, twisting the wrist and eliciting a pained cry from the angel. Not one to show remorse, Fuka sent a bone-crushing elbow strike into Sasuke's cheek. The force of the blow sent Sasuke flying backward against the ground, he stopped just a few feet from the entrance of the church building. From the ground, his pure wings were now tarnished with dirt. Though, they were not to be pure for long unless he calmed himself. How dare you! The female angel fired one of her own arrows at Fuka while Sasuke struggled to regain his footage. With a twist of her spear, the purple arrow of light was smashed into nothingness. The attack was weak, even for an angel. Despite Fuka's lack of concern, the archer seemed ready to fire again when Sasuke held his hand up. Enough, Sakura, he brushed his bruised cheek, wincing at the pain. Despite his act, the wounded angel was clearly out of breath and far too wounded to continue. She's just trying to tempt us. We'll retreat, for now. Sasuke kun. The woman named Sakura had a face full of regret, as if she knew she held her friend back. Not long after that, the angels did indeed fly back into the sky. Fuka let them go with no trouble, though she did offer the male angel a final wink for a goodbye. Well, that was fun, Fuka said before turning toward Naruto's hiding spot in the nearby bushes. Naruto-kun, you can come out now. That was very impressive, Fuka-sensei. Naruto offered her a compliment right off the bat. The fact was, his words were simply taken from his heart. No doubt, she was the clear victor of the match, in the end, all she did with the angels was play fight with them. You still call me sensei, even after all that, he he. Fuka blushed a bit as her wings fluttered behind her. Just because you're a fallen angel doesn't mean you aren't still my teacher at school, right? He added with a playful smile, one of which she quickly offered in return. That's why I like you, Naruto-kun. Clever and handsome. Fuka approached him with nothing but elegance as each step in her armored heels was carefully taken and meant to accentuate her womanly features. From inside of his chest, Kayubi's energy surged out of his body and covered the area between them in light. A few moments later, Kayubi emerged and held her arms up as if to attack. She had no qualms about fighting Fuka, whether or not Naruto saw her as a friend or foe. The fallen angel, to her credit, merely narrowed her eyes to cautiously gaze upon the new arrival. Her arrival, while surely unexpected, was not enough to intimidate someone who Naruto had quickly begun to consider a veteran at combat. Interesting, Fuka whispered, a gloved finger touching her chin in silent thought. Your pet? She asked with a teasing smile. Kayubi, however, was not so amused by the label. Her energy flared to dangerous levels, enough for even Fuka to lose the attitude. Come on, so. The kitsune threatened her with more than just words if the key release was anything to go by. Kayubi, calm down. Naruto stood at his queen's side in an attempt to stop her. She's just some fallen whore. Let me finish her. Kayubi continued to protest, despite Naruto's objection. Fuka did not flinch at her choice of colorful vocabulary, but Naruto did feel the energy of the fallen woman start to increase in a similarly threatening manner. I'd like to speak with her. She's been here longer than the both of us. Naruto offered his explanation as his eyes flicked back to his teacher. Perhaps she can fill us in on the talent in this city. The fallen angel's soft lips thinned in response to his hidden appeal. No doubt she was considering whether or not to help people who were essentially her enemies. Naruto was not about to appear as some pushover like those angels though, and if he got even the inkling she would hide something useful, he would not hesitate to fight. Fine then. Fuka's hands gravitated to her shapely hips as her mood began to brighten. It's the least I can do for the little devil I plan to add to my harem. Planned? Naruto raised a brow in response to her choice of words. Fuka offered him nothing but a suggestive wink. You may find it interesting to note that the rumor mill says a dragon-type sacred gear has been detected around town. This is fairly recent, within the last week or so. The morsel Fuka offered was more than appetizing for Naruto. 
A dragon type sacred gear? Now that is interesting. Dragons were some of the most powerful beings in all the world. They were fairly rare as well, though Naruto understood devils in particular had them most often as acquaintances of some kind. Sacred gears related to them ranged from incredibly common to some of the most rare and powerful sacred gears in the world. The chance for mediocrity was outweighed for the opportunity of greater power than Naruto could ever imagine. I don't suppose you would know where to find it? Naruto asked, though he doubted it. Even if she did know, why would she tell him? Fuka clearly had her own agenda and entertaining his wish was merely a whim on her part, or a part of her own plans. I'm afraid I don't, Fuka shrugged though she did not seem particularly apologetic. HMPH. As useless as I suspected. Kayubi grunted, her arms crossed in contempt. Such toys are not my concern, after all, Fuka said, hinting at her own agenda. I wonder what is your concern? If not sacred gears, then what purpose do you have here? I'll take my leave now, Naruto-kun. See you in class, tomorrow. Naruto and Kayubi watched as the fallen angel flew off into the sky and disappeared. They were no closer to finding a person of interest, but at the very least he could successfully claim the town had something worth investigating over. His mother would be interested in learning that tidbit of information. If the dragon-type gear was as powerful as the rumors seemed to make it out to be, the user would not stay hidden for long. Then, Naruto would swoop in and take them for himself. Come on, Kayubi. Let's a distant rumble signaled an explosion of some kind had gone off. Both of them turned in the direction they had sensed the release of energy from, and quickly grasped it was inhuman in origin. Since it was in the opposite direction Fuka went, it could only be someone, or something, else. Let's. Go investigate. Naruto prepped his wings and bid her to follow him. He took off into the sky full of intrigue over what could be going on in the direction of the setting sun. Kayubi grumbled for a moment before she too sprouted the thin leather wings on her back. Naruto narrowed his eyes as they approached the location he felt the energy of the blast release from. It was a park of some sort, but from the sky it was empty. He quickly detected foul play as a type of barrier had been erected. Another barrier, Kayubi whispered, as she no doubt remembered her own experience. Yep, and this one isn't going to stop me either. Naruto prepared to break through, but hesitated. When he tried to touch the barrier, his hand simply slipped through. Whoever made the barrier must have only made it to keep humans out and unaware, since there was no resistance to his attempt to enter. If that were the case, then he might actually be able to sneak inside. He led Kayubi back down to the ground, near a small cluster of trees that he knew he could hide in after entering through the obstructing magic. With his feet on the ground, he again pushed his arm through to test that the barrier was still harmless. Good enough for me. Naruto entered through with Kayubi close behind. Now on the other side, he detected a slew of new presences, all of them considerably powerful in their own right. They were all together in the center of the park, just a little bit ahead. He crept forward and used the plants surrounding him for cover. If he could avoid conflict like he did with Fuka and the angels, he would at least try to stay out of sight. It was not long before they were on the hill overlooking the park center. In the middle, the white cobblestone walking area surrounded a large fountain of sorts that sprayed water into the sky. That seemed to be the site of the disturbance, as he saw the still smoking crater and scattered rubble around. The first one he noticed was another fallen angel, hovering above the fountain. A brunette, she similarly wore a skimpy outfit made of leather and not unlike Fuka's choice of attire. Unlike his teacher, this woman lacked any kind of play or compassion behind those dark eyes of hers. A true member of the fallen twisted with her own desires. Below her were some faces he actually recognized. The redhead that had observed him enter the school was there, someone he had come to find went by the name Rias Gremory. She was the talk of the student body, who knew her as one of the academy's two great ladies. Her beauty was only matched by her smarts, from what the rumors said at least. Well, she is rather pretty. Naruto's honest feelings came into play as he could not help but stare a bit. His eyes naturally drifted to the girl standing next to her who wore a traditional shrine maiden outfit. Though she was out of school uniform, he quickly recognized her as the second of the great ladies, Akano Himejima. Once again, her beauty was considered second only to Rias by the boys of the school. Apparently, she was quite the sadist if the rumors were to be taken for truth. The rest were an odd assortment of second years that were in one way or another well known, Kiba Yuto, the pretty boy and Kaniko Taju 
the cute junior. There were two others that were in the back, as it seemed the other four were protecting them. One he recognized from simple passing in the halls, Aika Kiryu, another second year that was apparently a well known woman pervert. The other one, though, Naruto had never met before, she had on the robes of a nun and her blonde hair signaled that she was a foreigner of some kind. Why a bunch of devils would protect a sister nun made little sense to him, though. Aika was holding her rather protectively, though. I suppose you recognize them? Kayubi asked in a low voice. Yeah, for the most part. A bunch of devils, but I don't know why they are protecting that sister. Perhaps we can glean something from the conversation, Kayubi suggested, and the two struggled to listen into the ongoing dialogue. I'll say it again. Don't touch my cute subordinates, fallen angel san, said Rias with her lips twisted in a threatening grin. No matter her line, she delivered them like a true princess with a soft yet domineering tone. Rainer, said the fallen angel in response. She was not particularly concerned, despite being surrounded by hostile devils. I've simply come to recover what is mine. If you kept your subordinates' filthy hands off, then I would not need to burn them with light. The fallen angel lowered herself to the ground. Her proximity caused the others beside Rias to tense up, but the Gremory girl held up a hand for them to pause. Undaunted, Rainer waved for the nun to come to her waiting arms. Aika seemed particularly reluctant to let her go. The two shared a few words that Naruto could not make out, but the blonde girl seemed to want to go with the fallen angel. One look from Rias was enough for Aika to let up, reluctantly. Good girl, Rainer petted the nun, but the little girl did not seem happy at all. Goodbye, devils. The raven wings encased them both and a powerful energy emerged. In a flash of light, the two disappeared with no trace except for a few fallen feathers left on the ground. Naruto contemplated whether or not he should take his leave now before Rias and the others notice him. Considering the fact they were both devils, he felt it was only a matter of time before they had to meet. Perhaps it would be to his advantage to force an introduction in the aftermath of this emotional event. Kayubi, follow me, Naruto muttered as he chose to stand to full height. She narrowed her eyes, but dutifully followed in his stead. Together, they made their way down to join the conglomeration of devils as they had gathered around Aika. Without any attempt to hide their presence, Rias and her subordinates quickly took notice and turned to face them. Kiba and Kaneko quickly stopped Naruto's forward progress by standing in front of the others in a protective manner. Akano and Rias stayed in the back with Aika, but neither seemed particularly put off by his presence there. Friend or foe? Kiba asked with a sharp tone. Naruto pocketed his hands and shrugged. He had no desire to fight them, but he was not about to be intimidated by one of the Gremory's peerage. Neither. I was passing by and noticed you had gotten yourselves into some trouble. Naruto smiled, though it was rather hollow. Figured I'd stay and watch the show. It's nice to see you again, Naruto kun. Rias greeted with surprising familiarity. Her words even served to unnerve some members of her family. If I may call you that, Naruto kun? The smile she offered in return was loaded with something other than goodwill, she was playing him the same he did with Kiba. This woman. I like her. Sure, Rias chan, Naruto offered the same familiarity in return. Only fitting if two high class devils greet one another like such, right? To her credit, Rias did not so much as flinch at his teasing. Akano, the raven haired beauty Naruto quickly identified as Rias' queen, did offer a small giggle in return. High class? Yuto asked, unsure. Yes, Yuto. Rias motioned toward Naruto and Kayubi. The man you see before you has a king piece, like me. The nine tails next to him is a fellow queen, I see, Fu Fu, how interesting, Akano said with no small amount of glee. Kayubi leveled her glare at Akano as a familiar scent of challenge wafted in the air. As interesting as it would be to see the two spar, Naruto wanted to avoid conflict if he could. I figured that we should introduce ourselves. Despite us both being third years, we have separate classes, Naruto said. That we do. Um, an interesting olive branch you offer. Rhea's smile faltered as she glanced toward Aika, who was still sulking over Asia's leave. Your timing could be better, though. Maybe I could help. The Crimson Princess raised a suspicious brow as Naruto shrugged again. Devils should stick together, right? I can at least listen to your problem. Given a moment to think, Rias' expression quickly shifted from one of conflict to satisfied, 
With a genuine smile, she beckoned Naruto to join them. He passed Kiba and Kaneko without conflict, though Kayubi offered them a hearty glare. If you don't mind, I'd rather talk someplace more comfortable. The old school building acts as our clubhouse, so would you mind following us there? Rias explained as a red magical circle with the Grammary crest appeared at their feet. Naruto returned her smile with one of his own, I'd love to. Akano motioned for Naruto and Kayubi to sit at one of the Baroque couches that surrounded the coffee table in the middle of the darkened room. The antique style sort of reminded him of home and he soon felt rather comfortable in the room. Kayubi did not like the idea of cavorting with people she considered strangers, but she sat her well shaped behind the cushion all the same. Given the nice decor, Naruto found himself turning his head back and forth in an effort to see more of what the place had to offer. Night was well upon them after they arrived at the clubhouse, so Yuto lit a few antique oil lamps that washed the room in a warm tone. Fortunately, devils could see perfectly fine in the dark so the most they did was offer a comfortable ambiance to their coming conversation. Rias sat down herself at the oak desk found near the head of the room, next to it was a booth that Naruto could only guess was a dressing room of some kind. Yuto, Kaneko, and Aika all three sat down on the Victorian style couch across from Naruto. Given their cautious stares, none of them particularly trusted Naruto yet. He could not blame them, since he in turn failed to trust Rias. The nature of devils, he supposed. Here you are, Naruto san. My own blend of tea. From behind him, Akano returned with a silver platter of china plates and cups filled to the brim with the tasty liquid. With perfect manners, the queen offered Naruto a cup without him even having to ask. Bewildered by her kindness, Naruto accepted the offering with a mumbled thanks. When the drink was given to Kayubi, she fared little better. As expected, she hastily took the cup and plate from Akino's grasp and offered her an ungrateful glare. All the same, Rias Queen continued to wear such an innocent smile. She is a little too happy, I think. From his observation, it was more of a challenge to make Akino frown than it was to smile. That happiness of hers had to stem from somewhere deep. He wondered if it was another facade, though. If she were a reincarnated devil, she must have her own sordid past to share like the rest of them. I hope you enjoy it. Akano takes great pride in caring for us with such refreshments, Rias said, mirth rising in her tone. Naruto raised the drink to his lips as he observed them. The way they smiled and laughed truly did feel like a family more than a group of servants with their master. He quickly realized that he was feeling envious of Rias and the group she had gathered. A quick glance to his side revealed Kayubi to be absorbed in her own thoughts, ignoring the light and joyful atmosphere. He fruitlessly wondered if he would ever obtain what Rias Gremory had. It's delicious, the words slipped from his mouth as his tongue registered the sweet taste. You are as talented as you are beautiful, Akano san. Akano brought a hand to her cheek as a light blush overcame her well composed features. She offered a slight giggle, but it took a moment before she could muster herself to say anything. You are too kind, Naruto san. You can call me Naruto kun, if you'd like. Rias raised a brow but simply continued to watch the interaction between her queen and fellow king. She could barely hide her amusement as Akano bashfully agreed to Naruto's request. Shall we move on to introductions, then? Rias offered after the group had begun to settle down. Given her silence, she intended for Naruto to go first. Well, since I offered I suppose it's only right to go first, Naruto said with a shrug. I'm Naruto Mammon, and this is my queen, Kayubi. She is a nine-tailed fox, as you can plainly see. He motioned toward himself and then Kayubi, with her red tails uncomfortably pressed against the couch behind her. Naruto figured Kayubi would not want to say anything to him and his assumption remained correct. The kitsune remained quiet and simply acknowledged his introduction with a nod. Despite her rudeness, the others accepted his introduction all the same. Mammon. Dot the name sounds familiar, Rias muttered. Naruto easily picked up on her idle thoughts and found it interesting she knew. Whatever information she had must have been from a considerably aged history book, since the Mammon had not been around in mainstream devil society for quite some time. Given her status, Perhaps Naruto should not have been surprised the heiress was well educated in her history. While Rias no doubt racked her brain to remember, Naruto entertained the others by listening to their introductions. They offered nothing new to him, though he supposed it was best Kayubi remember their names. 
The time further introductions offered must have been enough, as Naruto noticed Ria's eyes popped with what could only be an answer to her own question. I remember now. My brother spoke some about you when I inquired, Rias recounted from what must have been a recent talk with her brother. Naruto knew nothing of the Gramary family, but he assumed her brother was something of a knowledgeable man. He recognized you after I described your family crest. The swirl pattern is rather simple thing to remember. And did what he tell you surprise you? Naruto asked, slightly amused. Rias glowered at his teasing but continued on regardless. Apparently, there really was once a fifth Mao who held the name Mammon, one of the original Satans, with a moniker that made him well associated with greed. He attempted to usurp power when the other four Mao went to war with God during the Great War. Around the table, the face of shock was rather common, not even Kayubi could hide her interest. Naruto remained tight-lipped as he listened to her recount his family's history with simplified yet relatively accurate detail. After great sacrifice, the Mao was defeated and his clan swept away to the edges of the world. Even my brother, Sears ex Lucifer Sama, was taken aback to discover some still lived. Naruto's eyes betrayed him as he discovered Ria's family connection to one of the current Mao. Given her natural prowess, the family relation only made sense. Still, it just went to show how out of touch he and his mother were from the rest of the underworld. We have experienced our share of hardship, Naruto professed taking another sip of tea while wearing bitter eyes. But, we are alive. I swore to my mother I would return the mammon to the seventy-two pillars, and when the mammon set their sights on something, we don't give up. Quite a fine saying, albeit for an almost extinct house, Rias said with little sympathy in her tone. Her eyes narrowed on Naruto, though she kept the same smile. I hope you don't plan to cause me trouble, Naruto-kun. I'd rather not have to end your dream by force. HMPH, Naruto ignored her threat with a stubborn grunt. I have to admit I am jealous of you, Rias Chan. Oh, why is that? She inquired, her interest piqued. This family you have here, creating something like it for myself is another desire of mine, he said, setting the tea back down onto the table. Their gazes crossed as Naruto stood his ground. For that dream to become reality, I've come here to Kuo to find my peerage. I'll develop a family I can take care of and trust, just the same as you did. The strength behind Naruto's conviction seemed to humble Rias, as she offered no further retort. The rest of them also appeared rather convinced. After that, I'll return to the underworld and petition for my family to return to the pillars and earn our old territory. Naruto's voice dropped as he said that. He had reiterated his mother's words, but he knew they were naive to think things would go so easily. Rias too must have grasped the same thought as she began to frown. That might not be so easy, Naruto-kun. Your clan has been gone for too long, and I highly doubt anyone would cede their land back to you over such an old claim. Her voice was at least somewhat sympathetic that time. Still, his determination was not so easily lost. I'll find a way, was all he offered in return. I admire your dedication, something of a trademark for the mammon I'm starting to pick up on. Rias' grin began to lose its luster soon after, however, you will need to be a bit more clever than that if you wish to return to the rest of devil society. Otherwise, you'll be ripped apart by their schemes. No one would want the mammon to repeat their conquest a second time, right? Akano added in a somber tone, her smile lost as well. Naruto could offer nothing in return as the simple fact was that Rias had a point. He would need to get stronger both mentally and physically, if he wanted to see both his mother's and his own dreams come true. That was something he had chosen to accept long ago, but hearing it from others made him feel even less secure. For now, at least, you and I have no issues with one another. Rhea's smile returned and with it, an offering of peace. That much means you are welcome to visit us here anytime, and I'd like to encourage you to do so at your leisure. That's quite the offer, Naruto said. Well, if you want your dreams to succeed you will need some devil acquaintances. If you would like, it would be my pleasure to be your first, there was a certain shine to her eye Naruto could only attribute to some hidden agenda. For now though, there was no reason to refuse, I might take you up on that, then. With that, the two groups of devils offered a series of short goodbyes and parted ways. Both had learned something about each other, and they were all one step closer to their own goals and desires. You seem to have enjoyed yourself. Akano, Rias said with no small amount of teasing laced in her voice. With Naruto Mammon now gone, 
Rias dismissed her own group to go home. They were kept late enough as it was, and she appreciated their hard work. Of course, as Rias queen, Akano remained behind to dutifully attend to the president and apparently suffer from a bit of womanly torment. Akano, however, betrayed nothing as she still continued to smile. She must have thought of something nice as she soon began to blush again. Come now, Rias. You have to admit he was rather handsome, despite his boyish looks. Akino's smile seemed to widen as she reminisced. So, even Akino found something she liked. I have to admit to no such thing, Rias said with a hint of mock pride, though a giggle from deep within betrayed her anxiousness. Under Akino's scrutinizing gaze, Rias finally broke with a small blush of her own. Fine, the Crimson Princess admitted with an overly harsh tone. I did find his whisker marks to be kind of cute. Foo foo, so even Rias. Akino's unfinished statement was enough to fluster the other young woman. Enough already. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.